his own voice, which is why he's so dangerous as a person with some charisma that people follow him and the league and the team can't have this. They finally got on board and now it's too late. It's a full fledged firestorm and it's not going to go away quickly or easily. Yeah, um, I looked at the apology. I thought it was utterly worthless. I mean, as you say, he had a week to do it, and he steadfastly refused to do it and played around the edges of it verbally. So he didn't want to do it. So it seems that it's just to get himself back out on the basketball court. And until the Nets suspended him, Mike, and they had a week to do it, and yeah. they didn't do it. I yeah. thought the Nets just wanted to put him out on the basketball court. They did. Even though they know, and we know, and everybody knows, that Kyrie Irving's offenses are not just to the Jewish communities, but any reasonable people. And then the league, until Adam Silver yesterday, until Adam Silver yesterday said, we're going to have to meet in a week or something like that, it looked like all he wanted to do was run away from this thing and get Kyrie Irving back on the basketball court. So I want to just say a couple of things about reaction so far. I think I'm right about this. I could be wrong. The NBA Players Association, to my knowledge, has ne they have decried anti-Semitism, but right. they have never named name Kyrie him. Irving as Didn't someone him, no. worth censure or punishment. Chris Paul and LeBron James, who were very quick to condemn Robert Sarver, justifiably, have not, to my knowledge, said a word publicly about Kyrie Irving to this point. You know, and that's why I want to say this. I want to applaud Charles Barkley and Reggie Miller for what they have said for days about this. I think yep. they've been right. Yep. And I wonder, Mike, yep. and I'm sure you do too, I don't know what's worse for the Nets. The fact that Kyrie Irving in New York City has aligned himself with anti-Semitism, which I believe to be true, or that last year he bailed out on every home game and just yes. let his teammates down. Yeah. All year long. I don't know what the market is for him. I know oh, he's Tony, great. There, there, there are always so? some idiots out there who will be seduced by talent. But let me just say this. When I talk about the Nets having, as an organization, no collective character. And they're going to go out and hire Ime? Really? Is that still in the works? You're going to do that now, too? See, I don't believe that can now happen, given what has gone on for the last week with Kyrie. I don't believe the Nets can do that anymore you're talking about the optics of a situation but you also talk about one giant embarrassment or what should be to the nba that would be the brooklyn nets let's move to baseball where the astros are now just one win away from winning the world series houston beat philly 3-2 and is now up three games to two last night featured justin verlander finally getting his first world series win rookie jeremy pena going three for four with two ribbies Trey Mancini making that potentially game-saving defensive play in the eighth at first base. Chaz McCormick running into the wall and leaping for that huge catch in the ninth. And Ryan Presley getting his first five-out save since July. Tony, what was the highlight to you? The highlight to me is plural. They are highlights. They are those two defensive plays that I believe yeah. saved the game. I believe the play at first base by Trey Mancini was spectacular. I, I mean, here's, he's right on the base, okay? He's right there, he's guarding it. Schwarber, as he has done all series, hits a ball 300 miles an hour it. that pull, no pull, one can it. get if they're not in front of it. Mancini yeah. gets it, falls down, his knee is on the base. That, and, and so that's gonna be a double and a run is gonna score and the game is gonna be tied. That is not as classically beautiful as what McCormick did in right field no. because he robbed Real Muto of at least a double. And so that's more spectacular looking, Mike, but I'm not sure it's as important because I don't think there was anybody on the base at that time that could have been driven in. I want to yeah, just Tony. step back briefly and say this, Mike. This has been a great series. Game yeah. one had a great comeback by the Phillies. Game three had the Phillies showing power with five home runs. Game four was a no-hitter by Houston. And that game last night was taut and well-played. Great series. It was. But, Tony, just one highlight. And look, I played first base through high school. You get in front of a ball like that once you're about 14 years old, you better at least knock it down. And he's already playing tight to first base, as you said, to guard against doubles. Right. Or extra base hits in general. Tony, the catch in the outfield – 
Tony, that goes on the all-time highlight reel catch, great catch of fall classic great catches. So you know what the number one is? It's Willie Mays. I mean, you did. Yeah. So this this gets if you mention anything in that breath, I know it wasn't the threat maybe with men on base and maybe nobody scores immediately, but well, it can ignite a big yeah. rally that can turn the game. Tony, it's that catch. That's on the all-time defensive yeah. catch reel. I will just mention that I'm happy for Verlander, a pitcher that great shouldn't have a stain on his resume that he couldn't win a game like that. And by the way, Houston, the last time, one of the times, 2019, they went back up 3-2. to two, Back home, lost both to the Nats. So this to is not over. Yeah. Let's, no. go to, yeah, let's go to last night's other Philadelphia-Houston matchup, the Thursday night football game. Philadelphia won 29-17, to 17, but the game was tied at the half. And Philadelphia had to struggle a bit against a one-win team. It took two second-half touchdown passes by Jalen Hurts to get the Eagles to 8-0. No. Well, Bond, did you come away more or less impressed with the Eagles after this win? You know, I'm not going to phony it up. I came away not having watched a snap of this game, which has now become my predisposition for Thursday night football. It's a waste of time, so they don't need to waste my time. They can waste their own time with this stuff if they want. That's a game, Tony, I think I at least got in my pool that that was my 16-point confidence game, even though I wouldn't appear to watch any of it. Tony, it's Philadelphia. They're undefeated. You knew they were. it yeah. could be trap game a little tiny bit, and that they could you know, sort of go, eh, we don't know about this game. We can't get excited for Houston. But I'm not – why would I be impressed with any of it, any Thursday night game? Were you – I was impressed with the result of it for this reason. I think that it's hard to win football games. I think you go on the road in a short week, even against a bad team with a target on your back because you're 7-0 and at that point and you win. I was impressed. I want to go to another issue, though. I want to talk about what I saw all morning long. What? I, they have these predictive, n- predictive numbers or whatever about the rest of the schedule. Stuff. Yeah. So, so they invent numbers, they yes. put them on the screen so that in the next nine games at the end,